We are at Madurao Ski Resort. Um, Madurao is a town, it's a very, very small town in Nagano. So to come to this place, uh, you take a Shinkansen. Um, you can take it from uh, major cities like Tokyo or Osaka. For us, we took it from Tokyo Station and it took us less than two hours by Shinkansen to reach here. The station to come to is uh, Iyama. It is not Nagano Station. So Iyama Station is uh, one stop on the Shinkansen after Nagano. At uh, Iyama Station, you will be able to find uh, buses that will take you to Madarao. So there are buses uh, owned by different operators. You just check online to see the schedule to uh, find out what is the best time for you to get uh, your pickup from there. Of course, it's best to arrange for transportation from your accommodation if possible. Uh, that will make it a lot more convenient for you. Yeah, for us, we managed to get a pickup from our hotel, but it's a very scheduled timing, just one time per day. Uh, so we make sure that we time our uh, Shinkansen to the pickup time. At the back of us, you can see there, there is a Madarao Kogan Hotel. It sits at the top of the uh, Madarao village. It is a very big hotel and uh, this is where you, the bus will stop there. And they also have other bus stops uh, along the way, but I think this is the most convenient one. So that's a, a very more traditional uh, Japanese-run yeah. hotel. Uh, there are a lot of uh, small little hotels around the area, but they're mainly, I think, Aussie-run. Uh, of course, there are some pension houses that are more traditional Japanese, but the Madarao Kogan Hotel is right at the at the lifts, right, the, the ski lifts. Yeah. So you don't have to walk a lot in order to, to start skiing. So that's the good thing about that hotel. Uh, but I think there are a lot of accommodation um, choices here. I just have to book early. Yeah, they have pension houses and they have uh, uh, some little, um, I don't know, maybe it could be Airbnb. The ones that we stay in was a hotel. So uh, it was quite easy uh, for us to get around. And uh, I think the Madara Kogan um, uh, Hotel has, uh, I think, about two to three uh, F&B outlets. So it's pretty convenient if we stay there. Otherwise, in the town area, there are also a few uh, food, uh, f and outlets, but they do uh, get filled up. If you can make a reservation, you should make a reservation. Otherwise, you might want to come after the peak dining period, which is usually about six o'clock. So if you come maybe around eight o'clock, but not too late because they do close early in uh, this place uh, because the Opresky in Japan is actually sleeping. <laughs> if you are looking for a huge convenience store like uh, one of those Lawson or 7-Eleven, you will be very disappointed because this is the convenience store. <laughs> it looks big but it's just the, the lower very level. Very, very small. And then just a small portion of it. Um, there's also a convenience store at the Madara Kogan Hotel. Uh, both that, very small. that place sells yeah. ice cream. This place has no ice cream. But uh, I think that place has uh, also very, very, very small selection. But it has a lot of like uh, the Nagano souvenir food items, which was quite uh, interesting. Yeah, so let's go in and just take a look. Well, it's pretty small, as you can see, but um, they do have uh, groceries, uh, snacks, water, uh, milk, yogurt, and even uh, beer and uh, sake. So you can get some of them here. But do know that the prices here are actually quite expensive. Well, it's uh, your captive audience, so I guess that's how it is. So if you want to get convenience uh, shop item, you uh, could get it actually at the Yama station. There is a convenience, there's a supermarket next to the station. Or of course you get it from Tokyo or Nagano uh, itself. We really like skiing in Madarao. It is a very small mountain, um, but we felt that the uh, trails were good enough, challenging enough uh, for us. And, um, it, you can spend at least about three days, two to three days uh, on average uh, in this place. If you want to stay longer, you can have a leisurely uh, pace uh, in this resort. I think there's sufficient uh, green and red runs for the, uh, I guess, average skier. 60% uh, of the mountain is ungroomed and there are also tree runs. So if you're <laughs> 
advanced and expert skier, I think that would appeal to you. Uh, on the mountain, uh, quite a few eateries. Yeah. Um, so we checked out a few eateries. Uh, we had uh, the Katsu Curry Don, uh, which is something that we like in uh, ski resorts. And uh, it was pretty nice. We had it in this uh, place called Heidi. Uh, it is a very, very big canteen and it gets really packed during the lunch hours. Um, the other place that we tried was uh, ramen at the, um, rather at the bottom or the lower end of the slope. So in this place, uh, they do serve uh, the regular katsu curry don, the, the sauce katsu, but we wanted to have ramen because it was so cold. So it was so cold, having a bowl of like hot soup, miso ramen was really, really very nice. Um, we had it there, it was uh, also very packed. Um, it was pretty good. And the other place that uh, we had our meal was uh, at Aki's Burger. So Aki's Burger is uh, also located around uh, in, on the left side of the mountain. It is at the one of the green runs and uh, you would uh, be able to find some uh, pretty nice burger in this place. However, it is very limited uh, quantity. So they sell very limited quantity every day. You have to get uh, the rate tax uh, at the door. Uh, one for each burger that you order. So, this is a number tag, a red number tag. Yeah. So if you miss out getting that number tag and uh, you won't be able to order or it just means that it's sold out. So, Aki's is, uh, I think, Australian run. Uh, the burgers are very nice. I think they give you also a very big portion of uh, potato wedges with every burger. So that was pretty filling. Um, I had mine, I think I had a cheeseburger and I added bacon. I had a cheeseburger and added egg. So it was really nice. Yeah, really good. Yeah, uh, we definitely recommend Aki's Burger. Uh, I can't say which burger I prefer in Mother Rao, but uh, overall, these two burgers were really not too bad. So there are some uh, really good uh, places to eat on mountain. Uh, off mountain, uh, at the town area, it will be something that you would have to decide which is the one uh, to go for because uh, it's very limited number of uh, dining options. Uh, there are dining options, but uh, I think it's mostly actually run by uh, Australians. Uh, it's uh, more than locals. There are a few locally run uh, restaurants here, uh, like Rudolph was uh, run by Japanese. Rudolph is a Japanese pizzeria and uh, Italian restaurant. So they serve pasta, salad, pizza, and uh, some finger food. It is uh, pretty nice uh, food here, but uh, it gets really, really crowded because I think everyone just recommends to come to this place. They take reservations, so you would have to uh, make your bookings early. Otherwise, come after eight o'clock to get a seat. Uh, I think that uh, we had a pretty good pasta and uh, pizza here. So uh, it's a place that we did enjoy uh, our food. Yeah, we tried the uh, carbonara pasta as well as the spinach pizza. So I think those are very good. Um, they use this very traditional pizza oven. So um, yeah, it was very nicely charred. So very good. Izakaya Brian is located in the Madurao Kogan Hotel. It is where you can enjoy dishes made with fish from the Sea of Japan, wagyu beef, sashimi, okonomiyaki and a wide variety of other izakaya menus as well as specialty ramen. They offer hearty dishes such as ramen, shinsu soba and rice bowl dishes. The Jazz Bar, I think, it is also run by Japanese. Uh, but some of the other uh, establishments that we saw were mainly run by Westerners. There is an Aussie-run burger place located in the village that was quite good. If the name is French, I believe it is pronounced Anjun. I would say I really enjoyed the atmosphere as well as the Chuhai, which is a flavoured sochu and soda cocktail. It is refreshing and quite easy to drink. The burgers are also pretty good and large, so bring your appetite. Um, you decide which one would be the ones uh, to go for, but I think the ones that we have eaten so far are the more popular ones. I think due to COVID, a lot of the um, hotels and uh, uh, retail outlets or even restaurants closed down, and uh, you have a lot of empty um, buildings. Uh, abandoned buildings, so it is actually quite a sad sight to see. So if you're interested in buying a hotel, and, uh, come to Madarao. <laughs> redevelop it, come to Madarao. 
I think it's uh, going to be a fantastic ski town. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a very nice uh, small ski town. Uh, not commercialized like uh, Nisiko. So it's a, yeah, it's a very different pace here compared to some of the very commercial uh, resorts. And I think this is one of our favorite uh, resorts so far. In Japan, yes, we really yeah. like it. I think that in terms of the snow quality, it is, uh, to me, it's actually very good. The mother pao is really uh, lives up to its name. And I think that we had a lot of fun uh, in this resort. Even though it's actually a very small uh, mountain, uh, we, you could uh, ski comfortably for about two to three days, definitely. If more, uh, if you want to take a leisurely pace, um, it's, um, it's a place that we would likely come back again. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified of our new videos and watch our other videos here. See you in the next video.